What's up everybody, Johnny over at Witchcraft Whips. A while back I was asked to make a tutorial for how to bevel or pair the strands for planning, and I thought I was gonna get to that today. I just want to start out by giving you a heads up that you might be in for a bumpy ride. I had to get a bit creative with my camera, but I wanted to get as close as possible to the action and show you how it's done. So, first off, what is beveling or pairing? Well, uh, this is a strand that we're going to work on today. And if we have a look at the strand from this perspective, the strand has a rectangular shape. It looks something like this, if I blow it up in size. Like so. Now, beveling or pairing is basically knocking two of the corners of the strand. So you end up with a shape that's something like this. In this example, you are knocking off the corner right there and the opposing corner on the bottom side. And this is how I do it most of the times. But you can also knock the bottom two corners off, making something like that. If you're just doing a four plat uh, lawn yard, you know, this would probably be the way to go. But with six plaid and up, I always use this method. The exception is when I'm flat plaiding, making a wrist loop or something, then I'm also doing just the undersides. So, what are you gonna need? Uh, well, basically, as with whip making in general, you'll need a sharp knife. Now, these are knives that I have been using for pairing, and they all work. The key word is that it has to be sharp. This one is a small Mora hobby knife. Found it real useful because it's not too big, uh, but the handle was way too chunky. Uh, I went on to using a Mora electrician's knife. Same thing there. I love it because it's a short blade. I can really grab the blade like this and keep control of the knife, but the handle is way too chunky. I moved along to this one. Really nice knife. Very thin. And I like it, but it's way too long for me to be able to wield it comfortably. I went on to the box cutter and I stuck with this for quite some time. Because I like to be able to hold it very close to my fingers so that I'm in control of the blade. But then again, a bit too chunky. Then I found this little bugger. Also a box cutter, but very small. A very thin profile, and this is what I'm using nowadays. I can really get up there and hold the blade very close to my finger, so I feel that I'm in control of where the blade is positioned. Other than a sharp knife, what you're gonna need is a finger guard. Now, this is just a scrap piece of leather that wraps around your finger, and you will use this to put your blade against. And this is a fresh piece of blade, but what I do, just to be on the safe side, is that I sharpen it a little bit more. Just a few strokes to get, you know, that extra crisp edge on there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of leather dressing and apply that to the finger guard. That makes the strand want to slide along here a bit more easily. And we're gonna wrap that around your finger like that. And we're gonna head on over to the strand.
and here we are. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. The most common way is coming up from the underside, like this. You could go on top, like so, but you could also come in from the underside if you want to. But I'm most comfortable coming in from this side. And basically what you do is you're gonna slide the strand along your finger guard like so. And put the blade in there to gently knock off the corner as you go backwards. And to get my knife as close to the strand as possible, what I like to do is instead of keeping my finger like this, I slide it along something like this. That way I can really get the blade in closer than if my finger was like this. I have to keep the blade back, but I want to come in as close as I can. So we put our finger guard on there. We get our strand in position. We place our blade and then we just move backwards. Like so. Now we have one corner on the top side knocked off there. And then we just flip the strand over to do the opposing corner on the other side. And it's just the same thing here. You place your blade and then just move backwards. Now one other important thing when doing this is to lock both your hands your blade and the strand in place. And what I tend to do is I place these two fingers against these two fingers on the back side like this. And when I feel that everything is in position, I just lock it right there and move backwards. Now we have the right hand side paired on the top and we have the right hand side paired on the bottom, making the opposing corners knocked off. If you want your plating to be real smooth when finished, this is a key thing, pairing your strands. So that is basically it. If you have any questions whatsoever, you know, just give me a howl and I'll see what I can do to help. Thank you very much.